Welcome back. The Trump administration is working on a $722 billion defense budget for fiscal year 2022. That's unusual for several reasons. Seamus Daniels is program manager and research associate at the Center for Strategic and International Studies. Seamus, welcome back. It's good to see you. What's your takeaway from this budget? What does this mean in your view that the administration is working on this budget at this time? Francis, uh, first of all, thanks for having me. Um, so typically, it's a multi-year process to develop a budget for a given fiscal year. So that's not surprising. Um, what is surprising is the fact that the Trump administration could publicly release this budget and that they could publicly release it um, and what the contents actually within it. What we hear right now is that for the DOD, it remains at $722 billion, which was projected in last year's budget. Um, but what the Trump administration might be trying to do is get its priorities out early so it can use that to criticize the Biden administration when it comes in, when it takes over the FY22 budget and then releases it uh, later this year. That's the surprise, isn't it? That The numbers, obviously, as you state, not a surprise. It's the number everyone would be expecting. But the, the reasons that I alluded to in the introduction are the fact that they're releasing such a level of detail and that they're releasing it to the public at all. Is that fair to say? Yes, that is. Um, because typically the process is that we don't actually know what is within this budget. Uh, the government prepares it, DOD prepares it, working with OMB, and then they would hand it off to the incoming administration. At that point, the Biden administration would be able to work on its own budget priorities before releasing that to Congress. The other striking thing about this to me is we have recently the chairman of the Joint Chiefs, General Milley, out saying people have to be aware of budget realities, basically implying 722 might be a pipe dream. There's just so many moving pieces here right now, Seamus. I wonder how one goes about trying to figure out where they might land and what that might mean depending where you sit, whether you sit in the Pentagon or whether you sit in a defense contractor or whether you sit in a company that sells services to the department or whatever. Yeah, I, I think we have to first look at what DOD projected um, going out into the future in this past budget. And we have to keep in mind that this was before COVID happened and they were projecting a flat top line. Um, so in this request uh, for FY21, <laughs> which we don't actually have a budget for FY21 yet, let's keep in mind, it was $705 billion. That's going to be flat going out into the future. Uh, but we have a lot of things to consider, uh, especially the impact of COVID uh, with the deficit last year that was the highest since World War II. But I think a lot of this comes down to whether Congress wants to tackle the deficit. And obviously, economic recovery from COVID is going to take priority. So we may not see that in this fiscal year. Uh, but moving forward, Congress may decide to pass uh, deficit reduction measures, which could have a significant impact on the defense budget. When we see a downturn in defense spending, uh, historically, the most significant downturns have come uh, after periods of high deficits. What I learned from your comments, Seamus, is that I may have gotten ahead of myself at, in thinking about the Trump administration's FY22 budget request when you're correct. We don't have a 21 uh, deal yet, and we're still we're right in the middle of fiscal 2021. What's the implication there for how one thinks about moving forward when we don't even know what we know, what we need to know about today? I think it makes it difficult, um, especially depending how the next week plans out for defense planners. Currently, where it stands is that Congress is trying to negotiate a short-term continuing resolution uh, for a week or so, so then they can pass a complete uh, FY21 budget for the entire government. Um, <laughs> and they also have to pass the uh, FY21 National Defense Authorization Act as well. Um, so there's a lot to tackle before the Biden administration comes in. How do you see those various things going down, basically, Seamus? Uh, I mentioned at the beginning of the program, the House passed the NDA overwhelmingly. If President Trump vetoes it, on the House side at least, that, that veto could be overridden. Expectation is the Senate will be the same uh, vote counters I read this morning. We're talking about 80 
couple votes in the Senate, which would be uh, more than enough to override a presidential veto. What's the significance of that regarding all of this spending? We haven't had a veto in 60 years or something like that. Does any of that mean anything vis-a-vis -vis the budget prospects for the department in the coming months, rest of this fiscal year? Well, the NDAA doesn't actually impact the, the budget level. Um, the biggest impact it has on the budget is that it authorizes a pay raise uh, for military personnel. So that is significant. Um, but in terms of the defense budget itself, what we're looking at is the status of this omnibus appropriations bill and whether they'll be able to pass that before the new year. Because if they're not able to pass that budget now, that means it'll be kicked over likely uh, to the Biden administration when it comes into office in January. And the military leaders, the uniform military leaders have been saying for years, continuing resolutions are the, the next to a shutdown are the worst possible outcome. That's kind of where we are now. Uh, Friday was going to be the deadline. Now it looks like next Friday is going to be the deadline. And there are conversations about a long term CR till February. This is when we start to get into that potentially destructive territory, isn't it, Seamus? Yes, Francis. And I think you hit on a good point there. Um, it's especially when we have longer term continuing resolutions, when we have longer term CRs, that really impacts programs, acquisition programs, abilities to spend money and to spend money on time and keep a program running on time. A shorter CR doesn't have as much of an impact, but when we're having continuing resolutions stretch into the new year, uh, that's, that's becoming an issue uh, for defense programs to run effectively. Seamus Daniels, thanks very much as always. Thanks for having me, Francis.